Well, Dreyer uh, came to Paris to buy some money to to make the film. It was not a problem because the last film he, he made uh, was uh, rather successful. It was a maître du logis, so he could find money very easily for La Passion de Jeanne d'Arc. But he didn't succeed in finding uh, a French interpret. So he was walking around Les Grands Boulevards in Paris when he passed by the Théâtre de Paris where Falconetti was playing La Garçonne de Victor Marguerite. And the, La Garçonne was a very pretty, new-fashioned woman, uh, very much uh, yes. makeup, and she was dancing the Charleston upon the stage. She was, the Charleston was lancé by Falconetti in this play, the dance, Charleston. Dreyer had heard from Falconetti before, and he was curious to see what she could do. So he buy the ticket and come inside the movies, and among the public, the great public, he had a look at her, and he told afterwards that his very wise eyes, no, regard, uh, regard, he could see behind the making up uh, very heavy, a woman of suffering, a suffering woman, and a rustic one too. So he congratulated her afterwards, of course, he asked for an appointment, and the day after he was at Falconetti's home and explains to her the project of La Passion Jeanne d'Arc. And uh, it was extravagant. It was extraordinary. It was something, something a bit foolish, you see. She liked that. She <laughs> said, already, yes. But in her thought, she hoped that her charms will be act upon Dreyer and he would not any longer uh, exige uh, from her to be her hair cut. So, her, so she was hoping that she would be able to charm him into not making her At the her end hair. of the film. I see. But she didn't succeed at that. <laughs> but, so that's how she was trust. She was a very, it was the number one in the theater for uh, her times. She was the first one, nearly like Brigitte Bardot afterwards, with uh, funny plays or tragic ones. And the newspaper meant the criticals, you say? Yes, from critics. The theater yes. Uh, were very fond of her, of course, and the great public too. After the prise de vue, when the other players, the other actors were coming back home, she stayed longer with Dreyer to see the rushes with him very, uh, very late in the evening. And in the morning, she was coming very early too with a big, big car and very uh -huh. nice driver, with uh, casket, the cap and anything, and the furs and the jewels <laughs> and makeup. And she arrived, she put off furs, jewels, anything, and take off the, the making up because they are bare faces. You see, she, come, she always yes. came inside the part, but absolutely, and the minute it's finished, it's finished. She's some, somebody else. That she didn't play anything else during the film, but one day after the film was finished, she was playing Loretta show. She has no, no time, and Dreyer had to be in a hurry because Falcon T must be free to play Loretta show afterwards.
when it's finished, she came inside something else, yes. entirely, and it was all right to do this film with somebody who thinks just as she, she does, but uh, that little thing into his li her life is not much. She never, never understood. It was this thing who gave her immortality, you see. Never. The movies were nothing at this time, and the uh, theater players didn't want to, to do that because it was nothing. I don't think she never saw him again afterwards. She didn't want to play see, the pictures, you see, because it was not interesting for her. She wants to play theater. In a film, you have to be directed, as you said just a moment ago. Yes. <coughs> she did like that, of course. She bought a theater uh, rather soon after the film, L'Avenue. It's called L'Avenue, Théâtre L'Avenue. Yeah, that's because at this time she could say, I want to play that, that, that. Everybody, yes, yes, Mademoiselle Falconetti. Yeah. But certain of the plays she wants to play were too expensive to bring up. That's too more expensive for the director of theater. So they say, no, we can't, it's too much expensive because the costumes uh, and so on and so on. So she bought, she bought her own theater to do what she wants. She put on uh, Phaedre, Lorenzo, uh, Les Jardins de Murcie, a lot, a lot of things. Uh, but, and very up-to-date. Uh, avant-garde. Avant-garde, avant avant very, very much avant-garde. And that's why the director didn't want to, to play that, because uh, nobody comes. So these intellectual people, a uh, few one. Well, so she ruined herself with this theater. Yes. So the people who she uh, uh, she ought to give money, she well, it was the theater. It was a very nice uh, property in the in the Corfan, the country. Yes. Uh, it's big, nice apartment up at the Champs Elysees. The car, uh, everything. She had nothing. Ah, ruined. ruined. So uh, she couldn't play either, because when she played, the people, well, they, they put their hands upon her money when she plays. So she didn't play any longer. She came to Switzerland. She took lessons for singing. She, uh, she sought to be a singer. And she was very sad at this, at this time. So, 39, she took a boat. I came to New York, but she never arrived because friends of her refused to take the responsibility of her behavior. <laughs> it was necessary uh, yes. to come into States. Hey. She went to Argentina, Buenos Aires. She was taken by, uh, in charge by the uh, colony Francaise, the little French were there, mm -hmm. who paid for rent, the rent of the flat, and she died. <laughs>